Welcome back. Tan and I are here with our good friend, Dr. Earl Henslin, uh, psychologist, author, um, trainer, coach, who has, outside of us at Amen Clinics, has ordered more scans and used them in clinical practice with literally thousands of patients, uh, from little kids to old people, everybody in between. Before we get back to talking to Earl, I want to read uh, one of the podcast reviews. And don't forget that if you leave a review at brainwarriorswaypodcast.com or on Apple uh, iTunes, uh, we'll enter you in for a uh, drawing for a free cookbook from Tana. Um, so this is from Kathleen. I absolutely love listening to you guys. Thank you. I became a brain warrior and lost a hundred pounds wow. and got off nine medications, went to Amen Clinics after mold exposure and got the bachelor's and master's degree I was told were impossible wow. for me. 2.8 GPA in high school in 1990. Five failed attempts at college over a 20-year period. I'm about to start a degree program I never dreamed of, my doctorate. I'm 47, and it's never too late to change your brain, <laughs> making me cry. I'm also doing brain our brain coach certification uh, course through Amen Clinics. When my mental health miracle happened, it was basically because my chiropractor had read research done at Amen Clinics and taught me what he knew about diet and exercise and supplements like vitamins and fish oil, we just talked about that, to change your brain. Prior to Amen Clinics, I'd been wrongfully diagnosed with bipolar disorder, Ooh. obviously with anybody not looking at your brain, was worth the trip to get uh, that off my record and find out I really had two forms of ADD, mold toxicity, and an adjustment disorder, not bipolar. No wonder the bipolar meds didn't work and fish oil, chiropractic, et cetera, work. Thank you a million times over for all you guys do. That's awesome. So I know you've heard stories like that a lot, and that's why you've referred so many patients to us. But what I want to talk about in this podcast is how you use the scans in psychotherapy. Yeah, and what kind of therapy do you use? Do you find most effective? When And how does that sort of correlate to the information you get back with the scan? That's what I'm curious about. Yeah, the, to me, it's always important to match the model to the person and what their needs are and so on. So I do anything f from uh, inner child work to deal with trauma to EMDR. Mm -hmm to thought field therapy, which is using acupressure points oh. and dealing with different emotional issues, even to some psychoanalytic work. Because um, at that very first uh, seminar with Dr. Amen, what struck me was that I knew uh, if we could get a look at the brain, it was gonna help change relapse rates for alcoholics, drug addicts, and sex addicts. And so far in these 25 years, only 100% of the time when I referred somebody for that type of scan, uh, did it show up with some injury in the frontal cortex and the temporal lobes. You know. And so there's an area in the frontal cortex called the orbital frontal cortex that has to do with impulse control and conscience. Mm -hmm. And so when a person gets that craving for alcohol and drugs or for sex, then they don't they don't access that belief system. So where it fits with therapy, and, and just about every addict I've ever worked with, there's some history of trauma. They grew up in an alcoholic home, and there was physical, verbal abuse or emotional abuse of some type. That, you know, in my field, the model is if you work enough on those issues, somehow you're magically not going to want to, you know, X, fill in the blank, of, you know, uh, turn to porn, alcohol, drugs, or whatever. But what I found out is the uh, left and right basal ganglia, that anxiety part of the brain, if I could calm that down and help improve the blood flow in the front part of the brain, then when I did like an EMDR intervention or even an inner child kind of an experience, 
because you got to have good perfusion or blood flow all the way through here to actually connect with the feeling and then articulate it. Interesting. Because if that basal ganglia gets too high, then the perfusion so drops So the basal off. ganglia, for people who don't know, these large structures deep in the brain that are responsive to dopamine. And when it's too high, you feel anxious. And when it's too low, you have ADD symptoms and you can be unmotivated. And you're one of the few psychologists in the world that really believe I need to balance your brain because therapy will go better. It will go faster right. if exactly. your brain works right. And without that, you're, you're not going to be as effective. And so you will often tell your patients, I love this, that this is going to save you money right. in the long run because we're going to be able to do therapy with a brain that works better exactly. rather than trying to do software programming mm -hmm. On a brain that has hardware problems. Right. That's that's what I was going to say is that we often refer to it as hardware and software. So the brain is the hardware and the soul and what you're trying to accomplish with and, therapy and is so the software. When, exactly. When people have low frontal lobe function, so you and I have both seen thousands of people right. like that, what are generally the things their partner says about them? Oh, well, they get frustrated because they might start something, never finish it. Uh, they're going to have a hard time remembering. They might promise their spouse they're going to pick up, you know, flowers or something, but they won't remember it, you know, because they'll get distracted to someplace else. And uh, and then, and particularly for the men I work with, they're just not emotionally available because mm -hmm. now they're turning to video games or turning to staring at their phone uh, or any number of things just to wake up the brain and, and improve that dopamine with those kinds of activities, which takes them emotionally out of the family. So they're not there for their son. They're not there for their daughter. Uh, and then for kids, you know, it's like they see dad going from one thing to another and feeling like he's so busy. He's got to do this. He's got to do that. And then, and they're right there all the time waiting for the father to, show an interest, take, stop, and take the time and uh, spend it with them, listen to them, and so on. Because a dad or a mom, really, they can't, if unless that anxiety part of the brain is in balance and that front part of the brain is working, they're not going to be able to listen. They're not going to be able to empathize, you know, with that child or connect with them at an emotional level. Uh, and they're not going to recognize the signs in them, you know, that there might be some sadness or hurt or anger that they want to respond to. Because if they're in that ADD flurry of activity, uh, or, you know, then there's the dad who's got some injury in the temporal lobes and can snap and just become explosive. Uh, in the first year of scans, uh, there was 30 couples I had referred uh, up to Fairfield, and uh, and every one of them, either the, the wife or the husband, had anger problems and addiction problems, and they had been through rehab centers and treatment programs and so on. And as of uh, probably last time I checked, about 15 years ago, uh, 27 out of the 30 were still married. You know? Wow! But you know, couples and children are going from walking on pins and needles, right. afraid if I say or do the wrong the wrong thing, you know, that dad's just going to turn it into a major issue. Well, too. and his low frontal lobes causes emotional trauma right. in the wife and in the children. Exactly. And when we scan their brains, that has that diamond pattern. You were going to say something? Yeah. Oh. Um, so balancing their brain is so important. Let's talk about when their cingulate works too hard. Oh. So cingulate is in the front part of the brain. It's often thought of as the brain's gear shifter. It lets you go from thought to thought, move from idea to idea. What have you seen working with couples when their front part of their brain isn't low, that it's really high in activity? Yeah, the thing about the singlet to me that's so fascinating is you know like couples come in and they get into arguing and they throw in 
things that happened 25, 30 years ago. And so all those hurts and angers from back then are present, and they will do that in a circular, cyclical way. And so what I noticed is when we got the cingulate, the basal ganglia, left, right basal ganglia, calmed down and got more serotonin to the cingulate, then that resentment might come up, but then they'd say, oh, I, internally, I'd say, oh, I'm, I forgave him for that, and then I have to leave that in the past. But prior to that, it was just boom, you know, right there, and it was just as fresh as if they had done it. Actually, because when people rehearse those resentments, they literally re reproduce the whole body yeah. con uh, chemistry, the neurotransmitters, the hormones, and everything of that moment. Mm -hmm. and, and they have that same intensity going on. And then what can happen with the other person, you know, then it's almost like a constant PTSD battle back and forth where now one person's triggering the other and they're both out of control. Right. You know, when I see it, I often think about in their head, they have a little mouse on an exercise wheel <laughs> and the mouse can't get off nope. and the mouse is mad it's and it's huffing and puffing and often they'll use marijuana or they'll use yeah. alcohol or they'll use pain medication to just get the mouse to shut up. Exactly. And that's not helpful. There are other things to do that are more right. helpful right. because when they use those things, they'll drop their cingulate, yeah. but they'll also drop their frontal lobe and then right. they'll make impulsive, stupid decisions that don't help. Our um, daughter, Chloe, when we scanned her, her front part of her brain was so busy mm -hmm. and you could just see yeah. how she gets stuck. Uh, it, it changed so much about how I was able to communicate with her and oh, parents. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I've been giving her the wrong supplements. I've been trying to <laughs> stimulate her. <laughs> exactly. But if you don't look at it, you know. No, you just don't wait to know. Yeah. I, I One man came in, his wife was ready to divorce him because he couldn't stay sober in his from his particular addiction. And then he was having men, uh, late 40s having memory problems. You know, he had put stickies all over the place. Now, normally when you see, you know, an, an anger problem, you know, you start to look at his background, which was filled with trauma. And from a therapist standpoint, it's so easy to look at it just in terms of trauma and then start working on it. But, you know, I had him scanned right away and uh, did some memory testing. And here he was headed for dementia because of, you know, staying in his addiction, not getting sober, and the multiple head traumas. Uh, and he was like in the 51st percentile and was almost like looking at having to retire early. Well, we got the brain working, you know, and then he was able to start to actually deal with the trauma and actually heal from it. And he started to stay sober. And one session he came in and he looked at me and he says, okay, doctor, what in the world is going on with me? And I said, what do you mean? Well, I sat down with my daughters and watched a Disney movie with them. Now, see, before that, his intensity and anxiety was so much. He wouldn't even sit There's down no and way. do that. I sat there and I watched that movie and I cried. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with me? Right. <laughs> I said, are things better with your wife? And he just says, oh, man, are they ever. <laughs> but... But that's get what I your mean. Brain Unless right, that whole... And your mind follows. Yeah. Get yeah. your brain right. You know, you actually had one of my favorite sayings I stole from you, which is no forethought yeah. equals no foreplay. <laughs> it's right if your frontal lobes don't work yeah. or they work too hard and you're not present, right. uh, you can't imagine what's going on with your partner, mm -hmm. then you're not going to get lucky. Well, one of the things uh, I saw from you, you know, is that you don't need to say everything that comes to your mind. Because right. <laughs> in my field, it's like expression is everything, being able to articulate it. No one says, oh, don't say that. Mm -hmm. It's only going to have this effect. And so there are many therapists on, uh, by not intending any harm, of course, I mean, but they don't stop people because I've learned I've had there's times I have to act like the frontal cortex for the patient when they don't have any right 
and they're just being impulsive. Like, what is the benefit of that going to be? Exactly. Are you going to get what you want? Right. Jerry Seinfeld once said the brain is a sneaky organ. Right. We all have weird, crazy, stupid, sexual, violent thoughts that nobody should ever hear. <laughs> and your frontal lobes it plays it out. It's like, if I say that, is that a good thing mm. or not a good thing? When we come back, we're going to talk about some stories of transformation that Dr. Henslin has been witness to. Um, so what did you learn? Post that. Uh, what did you learn in this podcast or the one before? Post it on any of your social media channels and go to brainwarriorswaypodcast.com um, or on iTunes. Leave a review and we'll automatically enter you into a drawing for a free book. And be sure to share this if it was helpful to you at all. If you know someone suffering, um, if they're having family dynamic issues or you've, they've had a head injury and you know, you know they're having problems, share this with someone. And also, Earl, how can they learn more about you? What books would you recommend? What's your website? Well, the Brain on Joy book is mm -hmm. the one that uh, I really like the most. And there, anytime anybody reads that, they seem to be motivated to get scans. They know because it puts it into understandable language. And my website is drhenslin.com. So D R H E N S L I N, drhenslin.com. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855-978-1363.